morning, everyone. Welcome, everybody, to STEM Careers uh, and Skills for the Future uh, Career Chat. Uh, today, with us, two companies present from EPCA uh, Network. I will represent them uh, a bit later. Uh, my name is Anastasia Boyko, and I'm, I will be moderating this chat today. Uh, the chat session is jointly organized by two projects, Scientix and STEM Alliance. Scientix is the community for science education in Europe, and STEM Alliance is the initiative that brings uh, that bridges uh, brings um, the gap between education and industry to promote uh, STEM careers in Europe. So this chat, as I said already, is supported by uh, EPCA, European Petrochemical Association, and this chat is addresses to uh, classes and uh, aims to promote awareness of all aspects of STEM careers. Today we are expecting to reach uh, out to more than two, 220 students and their teachers connected from at least uh, 12 countries. Uh, we will see later on uh, their, uh, their chat uh, messages in, in the box here. So um, the, the students are between 12 and 19 years old, secondary school mostly. And uh, to the classes, I would like to remind that our chat will last one hour and 30 minutes. And most of the time we will dedicate to your questions because it's all about your, uh, your questions today. So please don't hesitate to post them in the chat box in the uh, bottom left, uh, right corner. In case you encounter any technical problems during the presentation, please write in chat in private to Evita, my colleague who will be supporting the chat uh, technically today. Uh, and uh, let us go to the session itself. So this session, uh, as I said already, uh, about questions and answers to our uh, professionals. Uh, uh, they kindly agreed to come to European Schoolnet today, to the office. Uh, in today's chat, we will discuss the topic of talent and diversity in the petrochemical industry. And our speakers for this session are uh, Rosa Quarato, Market Development Manager for the Industrial Solutions Business uh, from Dow and Christoph German, Supply Chain Manager from Agility Chemicals. So welcome and thank you for being here. Uh, we are really happy that you uh, managed to attend the, this chat. Uh, let us start the session with a short introduction of each of you. So the, the classes are more familiar with what you do, what are your companies are doing. So uh, Rosa, maybe you can start and we in the floor. Sure. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Rosa Quarato and um, I'm Italian. And uh, currently I work at a company called Dow Chemicals uh, and I work in, uh, in the Antwerp office in, in Belgium, Dow Belgium. Um, Dow Chemical is, uh, as the, the name says, is, is a company making uh, chemicals, it's a petrochemical company. And uh, uh, when you think about products that Dow make, uh, makes, think about what you have around you, the products that you use every day. I think that a lot of you use a cell phone. So, if you consider the cell phone, we don't make cell phone, but we make products that go into cell phone in the, in the electronics part or in the coatings, uh, you know, the, the, the paint that you see on the phone in order to, to get the phone more resistant, um, resistant to scratches, for example. Um, and I've been in, in the current role, I'm a market development manager for uh, about two years now. And since I joined the company, um, I joined Dow in 2001, so it has been around uh, 18 years now. I've been uh, working mostly in commercial roles. Um, and um, I look forward today to, to, to hear from you. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to discover a lot of new things. I'm sure there are going to be a lot of challenging questions. And uh, so, really pleased to be here. Thank Thanks you very much. Okay. Thank you for this introduction, Rosa. And may, uh, now we will be very interested to hear uh, a couple of words about your company, Christoph. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, hello everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Christoph Hiermann. Uh, I'm German. I uh, live in Düsseldorf. Uh, Agility Logistics is a logistics company, uh, like the name uh, advises already. Uh, we, in total, have over 20,000 uh, employees uh, located in uh, 500 offices. Uh, in 100 countries, so um, that gives you uh, a bit of an imagination that it's a real global company. Uh, only with our staff members we could uh, probably already fill the football stadium, so uh, it's a quite big organization. Our core business is to uh, is transportation, 
so basically we move cargo uh, from uh, well basically simply said from from A to B uh, using uh, road transportation uh, could be rail could be by vessels uh, or by by air freight um, within our company we, we also have uh, some assets uh, like our own trucks and also warehousing um, so for warehousing we then um, well, can distribute for, for our clients uh, cargo to, to final destination um, within our company we also have some uh, specialty uh, divisions uh, like fairs and events uh, projects so project is everything which is uh, a bit bigger than, than usual so it could be like uh, uh, big, uh, big blades from, from wind uh, meals that we have to, to transport uh, and we also have the uh, chemical division where I'm uh, working for uh, as a supply chain manager and within my role I have responsibility for, uh, for operations uh, as well as for uh, business development uh, and I'm also leading uh, uh, several projects within the company. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to both. Uh, I want to ask about uh, where do you have offices of your company? Is it on the uh, No, no, uh, everywhere. Uh, we have got our um, uh, main head office in uh, in Midland, Michigan, in the United States. Uh, that is uh, the place where the company uh, was born 122 years ago. Uh, it was founded by uh, Herbert Dow, so it was actually kind of with the chemist. Uh, and, um, and we have offices in uh, all over Europe, uh, in, in Africa, in, in Asia, uh, in, um, in Australia. Uh, we have got offices in Latin America as well, um, Central America. We have got offices in many, many countries. Now, in terms of employees, uh, we are around 52,000 uh, employees around the world. Um, the majority of it is around 38,000 uh, is men. Uh, and uh, 14,000, a little bit more than 14,000 women. Uh, but it's, it's changing. So depending on the, on the job families, on the job categories, we have in some jobs more women than, than men. Um, a managerial level, depending on the area, like uh, Asia Pacific, for example, we have like a good representation of, of, of women, but also in Europe. Um, and uh, there are some uh, areas like uh, of job category, like administrative category. We still have a lot of women compared mm -hmm. to, to men, but things are changing, are changing a lot. We have a lot of women in, uh, now in, uh, in manufacturing, um, in, uh, in, as employment engineers, and, uh, and this is uh, this is actually great. So we have a lot of more women that come with uh, that have got technical background, um, uh, like chemical or they are engineers mm -hmm. uh, that uh, uh, that lead teams in in in, the money, in our manufacturing assets because we have got got a lot of planes around the world where we make our products, uh, which are then sold to other companies that use those products to make other products that go into the things that you use every day. Uh, from mattresses to, to the chairs where you're sitting, to the cars, and everything. So that's interesting uh, to hear that there is a change in the yes. terms of gender balance and um, more women are attracted to, to, to come to very specific and very uh, STEM-oriented uh, careers in the petrochemical industry. Indeed, and we encourage as well uh, women uh, within the company to uh, to uh, yeah to, to apply for 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 job I mean, not only within the company but outside the company yeah. so Dow has got a lot of programs with with uh, all over 100 strategic universities in order to um, to motivate um, uh, students to to study uh, STEM uh, in order to uh, and to to to, uh, to to find to develop their skills and their talents for for the future. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, since we are talking about gender balance, maybe mm -hmm. you can also uh, highlight if there is a uh, education program or some some kind of strategy in your company that uh, supports women uh, entering the uh, STEM industry. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, to look a bit back into to history of transportation, I think it, it started in a way with, with uh, trucks uh, moving around. Uh, uh, well, it started firstly within, within their own countries, uh, so simple. Uh, trucking and from a historic point of view it was uh, a male's world, world I would say um, uh, a very uh, challenging tough tough market to, to work in 
Uh, but I think over the years it, it, uh, it developed more and more and uh, I can also say that with the logistics we, we look for uh, diversity um, within our organization. Uh, it's getting more and more important. I mean, uh, nowadays you work in, in global teams, uh, have global challenges and therefore you need uh, the diversity to actually uh, to solve the, the challenges you, you are uh, faced with. And therefore we are looking also for, for balanced uh, employee uh, uh, structure uh, to have that in place. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So uh, I see that we have a couple of questions received from the chat. So uh, now I would like to open the floor to the questions that we received already from a couple of countries here. Uh, you can see that we have uh, a question from Romania. The first one and very important for students to know uh, what are the skills needed in the petrochemical industry? So I assume that it depends, of course, if you work for and relate uh, jobs and for uh, managerial, maybe. But mm. in in general, what are the skills uh, that would be uh, essential to, to gain yeah. before entering this industry? Uh, I mean, I see it in a way that uh, that the chemical industry as such offers a variety of, of job uh, functions. Therefore, you cannot say, well, this is a specific uh, skill set you, you need to have. Uh, I think uh, when listening also to, uh, to customers and having chats with them, I think what I heard is uh, that obviously uh, when working in the lab, then you kind of need to have a STEM background. So basically you need to have that uh, chemical uh, uh, knowledge uh, as such. Uh, but there are a lot of jobs in that industry uh, which also requires a, a lot of uh, soft skills, I would say. And I think those soft skills uh, will get more and more important also in future uh, because what we see now is actually we are at a, a changing phase that uh, um, every yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, processes get more and more automated uh, so um, system can take over some of the work uh, uh, currently employees or staff is doing uh, and therefore what I learned is also that uh, uh, soft skills so the, the uh, communication to each other, empathy uh, approach, uh, these kind of things will get more and more uh, important, I think, in the in the industry. Uh, and I think that should also be a uh, focus. So it's not, I mean, it's of course, obviously also STEM, which is very important, which gives you, uh, let's say, the, the base knowledge uh, as well. But it's also, for, for me, what I learned is also very much soft skills, communication, etc., which is will be uh, very important uh, going forward if you want to be uh, successful at the new industry. Good to know, yeah. And uh, I think you are supporting this. Uh, uh, absolutely. Well, I mean, if I, uh, I'd i like to add something mm -hmm. on what Crystal said. I uh, totally agree. Uh, and uh, uh, also, don't forget teamwork. Um, you work with other people. Uh, and this, your success uh, is always the success of a team. So, because, so, being able to work with other people is, is very important. So I would say, because we, 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 we don't work as islands, especially in the petrochemical company, you have uh, projects where you, you will have to work with uh, people from different backgrounds, from really different countries that you have never met. You worked a lot in before. And uh, um, so make sure that uh, you, um, that you are you develop this skill of working with other people you can start of course from where you are today because i'm sure you have got projects for uh for yeah to work with uh, for a specific topic with other with the, your fellow students uh and uh, uh teamwork and then certainly uh the uh, the uh empathy is, is yeah. very important and uh curiosity I would say that curiosity, whatever job you're going to do in life, whether it's in a petrochemical company or that kind of company, is, uh, is what uh, brings you to, uh, to, uh, um, to discover new things about yourself and about the world, to discover maybe solutions to the, to the, to the challenges of the world today. Um, and, uh, um, and also, don't be afraid. <laughs> it, it is uh, something, go out of your comfort zone, don't dare to challenge. Uh, because by challenging, you will be able to, to get to, to, to new things. Um, also, something that if you've got a STEM background, this will not um, prevent you to become a manager, to become a commercial manager. I've got a lot of colleagues that have been chemists, they were working in the lab, 
and that today are um, are working as a as a commercial manager for a specific business. So that, that there is the advantage of knowing the product that allows you then to uh, get to meet with customers, develop a strategy for a specific product. So um, in, there is really a variety of things that you can do if you start with with STEM studies because uh, it's, it's like uh, the sky is the limit in a way. So we have we have received the comment that this is very interesting point uh, that uh, communication and collaboration and teamwork is uh, a complementing uh, transversal skill uh, set that can support uh, further development in, in career. So thank you very much for the answer. And then again uh, from Romania, uh, are there any risks in working with chemicals, fuels, and plastics? And I assume how you uh, foresee these risks, how you analyze these ones? Well, um, of course, I mean there are there are risks in uh, when when you deal with the, with the, with chemicals. Um, uh, however, the uh, chemical companies uh, have got very uh, high standards of safety. Uh, I can talk, of course, for, for, for Dow in terms of the safety culture that we have, uh, where we, uh, we get I mean, safety. When we start a meeting, we have got the safety moment. Uh, safe, there are safety procedures, safety, safety trainings that we have to, to follow. Because in order to ensure that we don't get hurt, that we go home uh, safe, uh, that our co-worker co work also in a, in a safe environment, so definitely safety is a high priority. It should be the high priority for everybody, whatever job you make, you, 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 you have. Um, so definitely, yes, there are, there are risks, but as, full, uh, as, as long as uh, safety uh, is at the top of your mind at all the time, that, that, that procedures are followed um, strictly with no exceptions, then there, are, there will be virtually no risks. Thank you. I mean, I can can also confirm what what Rosa just said. I mean, we as a logistics company are in contact with uh, various uh, chemical companies, uh, and uh, we as a company have to fulfill very specific uh, safety requirements. Uh, so within the the industry, there are uh, specific certificates which are all under the umbrella of quality management, uh, which we have to fulfill. And I think the the chemical sector itself is probably one of the uh, uh, highest demanders of these uh, additional qualifications. Uh, and I think that's also has to do with the uh, potential risk of that product. So I think they, they take ownership of their responsibility. Um, I mean, it's always when I join meetings with chemical companies, it always starts with a, with a safety share uh, uh, within. Uh, uh, so therefore, you can already see that this is uh, handled as a priority from, from chemical companies. Um, so, yeah. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, we have another question from uh, UK, from Caroline, leading the class uh, there. So, has the world uh, the world is running out of petrol? What is the future of the petrochemical industry? Okay, uh, I, I think we are very far from running out of petrol uh, because um, there is a discovery of uh, many new kind of fuel uh, and oil, not fuel, oil uh, every day. Um, so uh, and uh, so I, I believe that uh, the, the time when the oil reserves will be empty is going to be really very, very far. I, I don't think it's something that we'll be seeing in the next 50, 100 years, probably not even 200 years. Um, so uh, the petrochemical companies today and, uh, and Dow is at the forefront as well of this, um, are looking at other ways to uh, reduce the impact of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the usage of oil into, uh, into, into the environment, in the industry itself. But by, for example, with uh, recycling the waste, uh, by um, so the waste that is uh, that is made when using uh, when using and I'm not an expert because I don't have a, a chemical background so just to be yeah. just to be clear um, so there is a usage of the waste uh, and um, uh, the, uh, the which which has got then a positive impact on the on the on the CO2 uh, reduction um, and uh, there are a lot of initiatives to um, to uh, uh, 
reuse some of the like converting the emissions of, of, of a process into energy uh, mm -hmm. itself. So yeah, th there are, um, the, when you think about the, the oil itself uh, and, uh, and what we can make with oil, like plastic, for example, plastic itself is, uh, because it's made of, by fossil, can be a source of energy uh, when, when it can't be recycled anymore mm -hmm. because it can be burned and it can, it can produce energy uh, as well. So, um, so I would say that um, I, I don't know what is going to be the future when the oil for the petrochemical company where when the oil reserves, but I think we are really very very far from that, at least uh, from now. Would you like to highlight anything? Uh, because you you've led with your comment to another question that we received. Uh, it's complementing the the yes. uh, everything you said just now. Uh, and Michelle from um, Ireland, I think, uh, she is asking, our lives are wrapped with plastic, literally, and problems associated with microplastics are large scale in, uh, in Ireland. We wonder what is the petrochemical industry doing to develop plastic alternatives that are more biodegradable, biorecyclable. Do you have any, any point of this uh, in your, in your uh, companies? Well, um, we know that plastic can be recycled many times until a point that it can't be recycled anymore. I think it can be recycled six or six, seven times, and then if it uh, can't be recycled anymore, uh, there is uh, it's, it's 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 burned and it creates energy. And uh, um, so the the problem of, of plastic is a, it's a problem that uh, plastics in the sea, for example, so you uh, this. Uh, the school from uh, yeah. Ireland was highlighting for the problem on the beach, yeah. like finding the microplastics. Yeah. Is, uh, is the way, so it's not the plastic itself the issue, is the, what we do with it and how we decide to dispose of it. Uh, and uh, like, um, uh, it, so it comes, it, it boils down to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to our relationship with the waste in general. So uh, we have. Uh, um, so you, you you should be like, uh, in, especially in, in your your uh, your age, the one that should show us show the way also to the one that are even younger. And ourselves, this is our job every day to educate the people how to uh, dispose of plastic and uh, um, and uh, how to uh, to make it uh, to, to make sure that it's properly disposed of. And, and that, so that it can be used for for other for other other usage, usage. Um, and uh, uh, in in the company uh, in Dow we have uh, participated to several initiatives uh, sponsored by the Ocean Conservancy, uh, and uh, so I've, I've been personally participated to to a few cleanups uh, in, in the Netherlands, also in, in Antwerp, uh, and uh, and it's unbelievable the amount of plastics that we throw away, uh, like. Uh, Plastic bottles. I mean, this is something that we, if we have a soda, we can dispose of it in a bin and not not, uh, not throwing it away. In, uh, and and this also it's also education. There are also countries where still it needs to be instilled in the children that uh, be, uh, that the bin is to to put to dispose of the waste and, and not the bin is not the beach is not uh, is not the street. So it's uh, it's also education that has got plays an important role in in, in all this, uh, and uh, there are a lot of attempts in the industry to make uh, uh, plastics that are um, uh, I'm not sure I, I don't have any knowledge about biodegradable plastics. I know that there are a lot of uh, um, trials to to make plastic. Uh, to, to reduce the amount of plastic, uh, there are I think also the European level there are there is a law that is going to come into force to uh, uh, to to ban the uh, the, the single um, plastics that we can use just for one time like straw for example and because, which can be replaced by other other means like you know the, the, the aluminium or, or the uh, the steel straws. Um, so, uh, so I think this, these are very good initiatives, um, and uh, uh, but uh, so yeah, so education plays plays a role, 
and uh, and yeah, in terms of materials, there are a lot of developments that in order to to also to change the uh, probably we will come to one day to a biodegradable plastic. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I I don't have the the, the knowledge and uh, to, to to back this up. Um, but uh, it could be that maybe anybody on the phone will will come up with that invention one day. It's uh, nice to hear an overview, but uh, there is a very uh, serious attitude or awareness about the recyclable um, materials and uh, plastic uh, campaigns that you mentioned, very, very educational. I think it also affects every one of us, like teachers, students, but also parents, and everyone has to take responsibility. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I would also maybe encourage, uh, maybe from today's chat, I mean, why don't your class maybe come up with a the project. I think yeah. everybody, it's it's a responsibility of everybody and I think uh, as a, I mean, Rosa already mentioned teamwork uh, is very important, so why not combining teamwork with a project uh, for uh, recycling plastics or, or something of that. So I think that could be a, a great project for, uh, for class yeah. as well. Good idea, yeah. yeah. Very nice. So. Um, we, I think we already answered a couple of questions that were uh, repeated to some extent. Then we have a question about uh, a possibility of electro cars substituting the cars that are run on, on oil and on uh, gasoline or other types of petrol. Uh, do you have any ideas of uh, any developments in this uh, relation? Yeah, I'd like to say just one thing here. Um, consider that 97% of the oil uh, is, used, is burnt. Uh, with cars, uh, with planes. Seven percent is used by petrochemical industry to make stuff like uh, the stuff that, that we use every day, that is transformed in order to make other products. So, um, so, so if, if there is a shift, of course, of uh, which are seen in in a lot of countries. I mean, think about China and a lot of companies that are investing. In, um, in, uh, uh, in electrical cars in order to, to and they've got some really stringent standard in order to, to, to reduce the CO, CO2. Um, I think that that is going to come. It's, it's going to, uh, uh, in, in a lot of countries in Europe as well. So that does not mean that um, in terms of that the future of the petrochemical company will, will be over by then because Again, 97% is, 93% uh, sorry, of the oil is burned um, with cars, is burned with with the transport. So uh, it's it's only it is 7%, which is significant still, but 7% is used by petrochemical. So so we we think that I mean, the, my personal perspective with the, with electrical car, um, we, we are going to have a much much cleaner environment for sure. Uh, and uh, um, and uh, that is the transformation that a lot of companies, uh, the major manufacturers, are, are taking into account because mobility is changing as well. So it's not just how you move, but uh, 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 with the fuel that is going to be in the car, but it's also how we move today. Mm -hmm. So uh, we see uh, um, like cars that are shared. I mean, if you think about car sharing as well, this is going to transform our, our life. Uh, probably we will not only car anymore in the future, but we will uh, share a car and then we will take probably uh, a bike uh, to, we will take a car first, an electrical car, then we will take a bike, then we will take probably a, uh, how do you call it? The, uh, the yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, good example, <laughs> yeah. in Brussels, so, it's in Brussels, a, yeah. electronic uh, it's scooters. A, 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 yeah. Electronic scooters, for example, and this is because uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, this is something for youth, especially, is looking for this in order to get more mobility. So it's going to be a significant change into the uh, into the transportation scenario, mm -hmm. how we move today. Uh, so with electrical cars, but also with other kind of mobility that we will uh, have. I think he will be where the energy for the electric car coming from. Yeah. Because if it's yeah. uh, coming from from a fossil, uh, then there's actually no uh, environmentally benefit, so it needs to come from something. I don't know, wind okay. energy, uh, sun yeah. energy, etc. So yeah. I think that will be uh, will be uh, key. Yeah. Another challenge, and that is the is the disposable of the electrical uh, batteries as well, mm -hmm. and that is something where 
some companies are working on it, but uh, there is no solution yet on how to properly dispose of uh, of uh, electrical uh, batteries. Yeah. And I think also the, the life currently of the battery is relatively short, and I think that's uh, still a problem the industry actually has to solve is about uh, the, the, the battery power, how to make it uh, more efficient. Yeah. So the, this uh, example that you saw already, it's very nice to know, I think, for students and for teachers to, in future, to know what are the problems, the issues existing, and maybe some of the students, as you say, maybe they will be able to, to apply this knowledge already in the school projects or in future when they apply for jobs, knowing that this is uh, a uh, problem at the moment and it's not yet resolved, so maybe I will try to, to to have some solutions for this. So thank you very much for this uh, background information. Now moving on to more uh, specific questions about skills and careers, because this is a, uh, a uh, topic for our today's discussion. Are there many opportunities for advancement in, in your companies? I think I will rephrase a bit a question from Romania. Maybe you can tell us how you started with the company and mm. how you grew uh, with your role. And where you were standing at the moment? Yeah, I mean, for, for me it was I. Um, I mean, I finished my my A levels in, in school, um, and then I was already at that time actually unsure what what to do with with my life. Uh, at that time, it was still that uh, in Germany you had to do um, was a duty to do a one year military service. So then I got into military service, and uh, which gave me another year of thinking what I actually want to do with <laughs> with my life. Uh, and then uh, when I thought about uh, going to full-time uh, study, um, but actually my, my grades in school were not too good, so <laughs> so I had to think about uh, something else as well. And uh, well, then I well read a lot of uh, job descriptions, and I then ended up with uh, with the role of uh, freight forwarder with the logistics. Uh, and what I found at the time fascinating about that job is that you have that uh, global uh, reach and contact because it's not only that I work in an environment where I speak to the colleague next to me, I also speak to uh, people in, in the US, I speak to people in, uh, in Asia, in the Middle East, so it's it's a very global reach which which I found simply uh, fascinating that nowadays you you can, uh, well how the communication also changed, uh, that made the job uh, very interesting so I started um, uh, as, a, as a trainee in, uh, in a freight forwarding company, um, which takes in, in Germany normally between two and three years. Uh, after that, I started as a uh, well, what we call in, in customer service, so basically booking uh, shipments, uh, arranging the, the transport, and then I've started then besides working uh, in my studies. Um, so um, I've done then a home study, uh, business administration. Uh, and from that point, it was like, um, well, I've then got team leader responsibilities, uh, supervision uh, responsibilities, and uh, well, which led me to my role today as a well, supply chain manager within my organization. So that's a bit of my background, how I got. That's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. So you had actually taken some professional development on the side uh, to, to yeah. grow in the company. Yeah. And do you have any professional development opportunities now for, for those people who start only with this uh, as a trainee or uh, some very, very basic uh, level of, um, of, uh, of the job? Yeah. Company? I mean, what, what we also offer as a company, I mean, the entry within to our company can be uh, can be uh, directly after school, maybe after yeah. 10 years already. Uh, could be like also, I mean, in the warehouse uh, work in the warehouse, which, which needs to be done, but also as a, in, in customer service. But there's also an entry for uh, students who do uh, like a, a combination of work and, mm -hmm. and studies. Yeah. Uh, so there's also entry uh, for them for uh, well, being part of, of uh, projects, support mm -hmm. projects, etc. So I think it's also in our industry a variety of uh, options where you can actually entry our yeah. our company. Oh, that's interesting to know. Uh, Ruta, do, do you have any comments? Uh, yes, absolutely. And um, uh, I mean, apart from, okay, as I said in the beginning, I've been always in uh, 
in the commercial role. So when I started in, the, in DAO, uh, I, I came actually from a company that DAO merged with or, or acquired, uh, and uh, which was also a technical company. So when I started in DAO, uh, it was, uh, I started as uh, in sales. So uh, and um, I was uh, looking up for customers in companies in the UK, uh, Ireland, uh, and France. And it was a great experience, the fact of meeting with customers, listening to them, and uh, listening exactly what they, are, they were looking for, and then work with the technical team in, uh, uh, in order to find a solution for, 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 this, uh, for the customers. Now, one of the things, then afterwards, I, I moved into uh, um, product marketing specialist role. So I was uh, supporting the product manager, then I worked in commercial excellence, then I moved to field marketing. It was at the time when I decided to go back and study while working. So I, 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 uh, I think I had a master in, in, in marketing completed in here in, in, in Brussels. And then I, um, I went into a marketing manager role and then marketing development. So it has been a, always a, a, a evolution, a, been always in commercial because this is my natural element. I really like uh, the, the, the being closer to the market, being closer to, to the to customers. Now, when I joined DAO, I was surprised of the opportunities, the real opportunities that were available and uh, opportunities to, uh, to further develop yourself there are, in the system that we are using for learning internal, there are over 40,000 um, courses that we can, we can follow. There are online courses, there are uh, classes uh, that, you, that you can follow. Um, and, uh, uh, and in terms of uh, opportunities, I mean, think about uh, jobs in manufacturing, think about uh, jobs okay, in management or commercial, I mean, sales. Uh, think about uh, researchers, uh, people that work in research and development, that uh, develop patents. So there are a lot of opportunities and opportunities of advancement as well. And this depends only if you want it, uh, if, you, uh, if uh, um, you have always to be honest with yourself about exactly what you want to do. And, uh, and there, are, there are some people that are uh, happy to stay in their role mm -hmm. for a long time and they thrive at it, they do good at it. And there are some other people that like to move, they like to evolve. And, uh, and DAO offers many opportunities to, to, to evolve. So this industry, I mean DAO and the industry, the, the petrochemical industry offers a lot of opportunities to, I mean, consider some of the like STEM careers in DAO, just to give an example, mm -hmm. engineer, researcher, scientist, IT specialist, health and safety specialist, uh, process technician, uh, skilled trade technician. So, uh, and there are a lot of programs like a, a apprenticeship program, like the one that, uh, that Chris was mentioning, where you can, uh, you can uh, have, uh, uh, maybe you are still studying and mm -hmm. you can do an apprenticeship during maybe a summer, maybe six months, uh, and uh, which can be maybe as a completion of your study, like for the programs you were showing uh, uh, outlining earlier. And uh, um, there are as well uh, programs that we sponsor with the, with the university, some projects as well. As I said earlier, we, uh, we also work with uh, over 100 mm -hmm. in the university. Um, we have teams of DAO that uh, our ambassadors go and, uh, and go to, to, to student fairs. To, uh, to university themselves in order to recruit the, uh, the, the, the best candidates that will work in, uh, in, the, in the future of, of, of DAO, in the future DAO. So I would say that no matter the, the, uh, the, uh, the, for the STEM studies, certainly it's, uh, it's, uh, there are a lot of opportunities, but uh, again, be adamant, be brave, and, uh, and uh, also be honest with yourself about exactly what you want to do. And you can start maybe as a, a process engineer or a technician, and, uh, uh, and uh, if the way is there, and also the way to develop yourself, to learn new things, then you can uh, de definitely evolve in, a, in, other, in other jobs. It's a very whether you are a woman, yeah. whether you are a man. Yeah. I mean, there are equal opportunities. Normally, if the, when there is a recruitment process, we always look for the best candidate. Yeah. Uh, so uh, no matter the age, no matter the gender, no matter the background, uh, actually we, we encourage diverse background because if we get 
a diverse background, we can get actually we are more profitable as a company because we bring the, the, the best of uh, everybody and uh, um, and uh, so there are equal opportunities it's, uh, it's just put yourself there and, uh, and and go for it be at the direction the focus to you to, to, to go ahead don't be afraid that's a very inspiring answer I guess and it answers a couple of questions that we received in the chat I hope uh, uh, the teachers are satisfied with the with the uh, answers received. So uh, moving on, uh, because we discussed the transversal skill, uh, like communication, teamwork, is there a place for creativity in the works in uh, in the jobs that uh, petrochemical industry offers? So creativity is some kind of uh, skill that seems only for art or something like this, but I think there is a place for creativity everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the example just described was already was, was recycling, recycling of plex, plastic, etc. Yeah. So, I mean, there is a high demand. I mean, we all live in the same world. Uh, we want to, to keep it uh, uh, well and nice. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's uh, therefore also, especially in the uh, chemical industry, there's a lot of need for cre cre uh, creativity uh, as, as such um, and I can only encourage uh, you youngsters to uh, to to make the difference yeah? Yeah, <laughs> just uh, sure, sure. Uh, go out there um, at uh, things you uh, uh, at value at your thinking uh, etc so it's it's uh, well uh, it's also your world so do yeah. something uh, about it I mean that's what I would say uh, well, to, to encourage Young and uh, yeah, the thinking out of the box, the fact of creativity is also uh, you can use your creativity in problem solving. We have problems every day, so the fact of creating uh, or finding creative ways to solve the problem uh, certainly can benefit the people that are very uh, very creative. Uh, and uh, and think about creation. I mean, think about patterns that you could create if you invent something new. Uh, so definitely creativity finds a, a big place in, in a petrochemical company. I think. Yeah. And maybe from, from our logistics company point of view, uh, also, I mean, we are only a service provider, so we do not have a, a product as such. Yeah. So actually the, the only cause of our existence, so to speak, is to uh, serve somebody and provide added value. And added value is not like uh, transporting something from A to B, because then you have in the market, you have thousands of companies who could uh, easily do that. So I think as a service provider, it's always think outside the box mm -hmm. to add value to, to somebody, because otherwise uh, you will not uh, survive as a company. So I think there's, there's a high need within organizations for people who think outside the box. Uh, because they are the ones who bring uh, the organization uh, forward. Yeah. yeah, which brings to a nice uh, topic, which is innovation. Yeah, yeah. yeah and the innovation is uh, is the fuel uh, of of a company, and uh, that is the one that allows companies to to be there for many, many, many years. The fact of continuously innovating mm -hmm. and bringing new solutions solve some of the, uh, bring solution to some of the challenges of the, of, of the world, like reduction of CO2, for example, uh, is, a, is one of them, or creating maybe a new, uh, a medicine that will, uh, will allow to, uh, uh, to defeat uh, some form of cancers, for example. So, uh, yeah, innovation is, uh, is key in, uh, in, uh, in every industry, and definitely for the chemical industry. We have a couple of questions that we already answered, so I, I will uh, have to skip them because we have we will have a recording afterwards, and you can hear the answer all the answers of, from our experts uh, being here today. Uh, I hope you will, you will be uh, looking for interesting information for your classes. And uh, since we have a chat for teachers and uh, students, maybe a hard uh, question for you, but I, I will still would like to add, address this. How, from your point of view, from your personal, most probably, teachers can support the development of the skills uh, needed for uh, for your industry? So, how, how, from the teacher's perspective, they can uh, ensure that the students will have skills needed for the future jobs 
I, I think it's uh, it also will cover all STEM jobs, not only petrochemical uh, industry. Yeah. yeah, I think again, I think we are coming back to a point about uh, teamwork, which which I think is is key from from the industry, and, and therefore I think that's uh, also something. Uh, which could be addressed by by key trust within team work within uh, within club. So I think that's a good opportunity to to set a, a future uh, skills. And also uh, what I've earlier mentioned about uh, soft skills and communication. I think it's mm -hmm. also. I mean, if I remember my my school years, I was also uh, always afraid uh, when speaking in front of uh, classes. But I think use the time now <laughs> to to train it. Yeah. Uh, rather than being now uh, shy and then have to learn it afterwards, uh, I think that uh, would be uh, my message in a way because I was in the same position, always a bit afraid and shy. Uh, but uh, well, you are—I mean, you are now here to learn, yeah, in, yeah. in school yeah. and uh, take the opportunity to uh, uh, to step out of your uh, confidence zone yeah, and then try something new. And I think what you're doing today is uh, great because you're speaking yeah. to 200 uh, plus students already. So it's uh, really nice of you that you overcome this uh, shyness uh, that you had in, in the previous years in your school time. So a uh, very good point, the one uh, raised by, by Christo. And I'd like just to add something on the, uh, for, for the teachers, like um, uh, go out of the classes demonstrate, go on the field, uh, go to maybe open days that are offered by um, petrochemical plants to see how really people work. So that maybe some of the students can shadow the, the, a, a colleague one day, a, a person that works in a plant to see how the job is actually done. And uh, I remember something when, when I was, uh, I was um, 13 uh, before starting my scientific studies because I did study some chemistry and physics a lot actually, I had quite a lot of hours until I was 19. Um, I remember one of the, the teachers that was a big inspiration for me uh, to, to, to go, then go for scientific studies was that we had, uh, um, she showed us how to make wine, how to make olive oil. So we would actually have trips uh, and uh, to, we would go to a place, to, to vineyards, uh, and in order to see how the wine was actually made, how the olive oil was, was made, which kind of olive oil, and, and, and then uh, there were links, of course, with chemistry in order to, to understand the, uh, the molecule and then the taste, uh, all this. And that is, I remember we were like, wow. And the fact of seeing and of demonstrating things was for us, like, uh, I, for myself personally, eye opener. And this could be a big motivation for students when they see how actually things work. So I would say theory is very important, is very, very important, but practice probably makes the whole difference mm -hmm. and that can inspire students to, to, to go towards uh, some, uh, some more, to have more girls, more, uh, more uh, boys to go towards STEM studies. Because a lot of things can become up, can, can be like abstract, you know, things yeah. like a chemical formula can be abstract if you don't know exactly what uh, what it represents. So, uh, so that is would be my my, my advice. Just uh, um, contact companies uh, in order to, to see. Okay, can we see how it works? And yeah. companies are very willing to do that. They organize yeah. it yeah. in a safe with safety because safety is very important. And uh, uh, in order to entice kids to uh, and, um, and ensure how things are actually done. So I think uh, hands-on experience, as you pointed out, yeah. it's very important for students to, to, to have this uh, experience in their lives and as soon as uh, possible. <laughs> also for, I, I think also for teachers it matters if they see industry inside, like what, what, what to tell to students if they ask a question about a company, uh, how the uh, the working day looks like. So th this brings me to the next question because you mentioned shadowing, job shadowing. Yes. Uh, so what is your typical working day looks like? Maybe you can explain how it's, uh, uh, how, what activities uh, you're performing during the day or maybe during the week or over the months, over some period of time. Okay, um, I can start. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm, um, I'm I'm a market development uh, manager. So my job is to uh, 
work on projects in order to grow the market, to grow, for example, the sale of a certain product for a certain market, for a certain application. And uh, uh, I lead mainly projects. So I work with teams. And, and sometimes I work, I mean, most of the times, I work with teams and people that I've never met before. I only, only know their voices. And uh, uh, because and so I'm frequently, very frequently on the phone in conference calls, uh, sharing documents, and and each person in the team has got the task. So I'm mm -hmm. leading, making sure that things are done in, at the right time, uh, and making sure that uh, the expectations are are clear, and have the, the, the feedback of the other person in order to. That, that mm -hmm. I need to be sure that the, the other team member knows what he or she is expected to do in the team and by when. So um, so if I look at my typical day, it is uh, a lot of times really spent on, in, uh, on the phone in meetings, working on projects, advancing projects, and, uh, uh, and working with, with people from different backgrounds, different functions as well. So I work with uh, uh, people from the, the TSMD, from uh, people from the research and development, people from the technical service, people from uh, health and safety, uh, people with, from supply chain, people from logistics, um, uh, with the marketing manager, with the product manager, uh, and, uh, uh, and, um, and I love it. I'm going to say I love it. And uh, <laughs> the fact of, uh, because each person brings something different. And so and this brings also to the topic of today of, of, of diversity. Mm -hmm. And if people also, uh, it's not just to have a diverse background or diverse uh, experience, and, uh, but it's also the fact that if you, um, if you feel well in what you do, and if you feel, feel well with, with, with yourself, and you, you will bring the, the whole yourself to work every day. And, and, and this means that you will bring the best of you every day. Um, so, so there is the topic of inclusion at the same time. So, because we can have a diverse company, but if we are not making sure that the people feel, feel included, then we fail. Because if people do not feel included, do not feel respected, uh, do not feel at ease with what they can bring, uh, then, then we miss really uh, a big opportunity. So, uh, and, uh, um, so, yeah, the, the, the fact of uh, respect to the, the, the teamwork uh, is, uh, is, yeah, it, it is crucial. And this is something that I have every day my job, and I, it's one of the parts that I enjoy, I enjoy the most. Thank you very much. It's, it really sounds like an advice uh, to, to all uh, students, because if you don't enjoy your work, yes. most probably you need to think about it and yeah, yes. maybe switch to something that will be really 100% yeah. of your uh, yeah. interest. Uh, yeah, for me, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I have in my role uh, operation uh, responsibility, so uh, I closely work with my uh, colleagues within the uh, uh, Düsseldorf office about uh, daily tasks, so also like um, making sure that daily KB's eyes are, are met. Uh, so there's also a lot of team meetings uh, involved. Uh, it's also with, with operations. Uh, we used to say there's always something, <laughs> so uh, there's always something, uh, somebody rings you, tells you, okay, I have now this challenge, could you help me? So there's a lot of uh, phone calls uh, involved, uh, and actually uh, what was already mentioned, most of the times it's actually team uh, effort. So uh, during my day, it's, it's normally that uh, I have uh, well, kind of uh, pre-booked uh, uh, team meetings, uh, also calls with, with customers, uh, calls with, with our suppliers. Uh, so that's one of the routines I have uh, uh, daily. Um, so a lot of communication is normally majority by, by phone, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, just because uh, I mean the, the team we work in is also a global, uh, 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 well, basically on, on a global level, and therefore. Uh, we kind of need to uh, do that by, by phone. Uh, I'm also responsible for uh, for business development and that, uh, that role. Uh, I'm regularly also visiting um, uh, pairs and events. Uh, so there's also uh, traveling involved within, uh, within Europe. Uh, so for example, last week I was in Nuremberg uh, visiting a, a show uh, and going to uh, pairs and exhibitions. It's normally 
a lot of networking uh, involved. Yeah. So speak to as many people as you can, uh, because there's always some uh, value you can take out of that. And uh, again, especially for uh, a service uh, provider as we are, we need to stay in close contact with companies like like Dow uh, to actually understand what what their uh, challenges are. Um, so that's also one of the things I like probably most about my job is to um, to have uh, different kind of chats with so many different people that can be on a fair, uh, that can be dinner at, at e in the evening, uh, which I think is, is just great because then you also learn something about their uh, private life and everybody has to tell an, uh, a very exciting story, I think. So it's, it's yeah. always uh, uh, nice to have. So um, yeah, as well, uh, then projects, normally projects for me is uh, to talk about a period between three to, to six months. Um, we also then are um, well, tackling the project with uh, with other team members, so it's, it's again a lot of communication. Mm -hmm. So, so for me to summarize, probably the, the key element is uh, communication. I think in, in my role, I mean, there's a lot of uh, besides that emails involved. So nowadays, it's still a lot of emails uh, typed in, into the computer. Uh, I think that's probably getting less and less uh, when. Uh, computers start more communicating to, to each other, uh, but still today it's, it's a lot of emails coming in, so that's something mm -hmm. you also need to fit into your day, yeah. um, because the messengers also want to receive a reply, so... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, <information>. of course, <laughs> and this, uh, that you described your typical working day, it even it is even more appreciated that you are here today and you are dedicating your time to, to the chat, because it's also not uh, usual activity for you, I must say, uh, from, from what you explained. So, uh, you, Christophe had previous experience with the chat uh, here at European School Night, Rosa didn't have any, uh, but maybe you, 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 have, uh, you have some presentations for schools or uh, well, um, how it is integrated in CSR uh, strategy maybe in your company, educational activities. I mean. Um, we do have uh, some programs also for teachers, uh, and um, uh, we have programs for, for schools. I, I, I don't know the specifics right now, yeah. but it's something that I can get back to you mm -hmm. on this sure. definitely. Yeah. Um, and um, so we, uh, so there are a lot of resources there for, yeah, definitely for, for, for students. As I said earlier, yeah, apart from the programs of uh, a student can also do an internship. In, uh, in, in the company, um, depending on the location, um, mm -hmm. because it can be maybe an internship which is like a plan for an internship maybe in, in, in an office. So depending on the need, sometimes in summer there are some mm -hmm. summer interns because there is no school and other possibility for the student to to do an internship. Um, and uh, but yeah, there are there are several resources. Now I see the, the questions yes, on, uh, yes, from, the next uh, from question. Slovakia yeah, yeah. Uh, about uh, online labs. Um, I, I don't have a specific. Slovakia there are. We there can are, come back yes, to the audience absolutely. with some links, yes, uh, some yes, specific advice yes. on this. Absolutely, uh, yeah. and, and there are yeah definitely because I've seen it about how the uh, yeah, from how you start with crude oil and uh, how it is changed with the different uh, different materials and from petrol to fuel and, and other uh, and other. Uh, Another um, product. Mm -hmm. So I, I, get, I get there are a lot, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, tools, a lot of resources, yeah. and that specifically has got programs mm -hmm. for students, yeah. programs for, for for teachers as well, um, uh, learning tools, development tools, um, and yeah. I'll get back to you. Sure, with, uh, yeah. more that would be that. useful yeah. to share with everyone yes. on our website. Yeah. I personally was in charge of this. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any educational program that you have in the in the CSR strategy or in any other uh, aspect? Yeah, what comes to my mind is that we also offer uh, open days for specifically targeting uh, students where they yeah. come come uh, to our office and we show them our daily routine. I think that's something I can also then just ask, well, get in touch with us and yeah. uh, we rearrange something. Because I think that's um, what, what at least the feedback we got from students is that it's really uh, nice for them to actually see what happens uh, really inside uh, inside a company. Because in school, it's more 
uh, theory uh, knowledge, uh, but I think what Rosa also described is that uh, ideal is that you also have already some practical aspect. Mm -hmm. and I think with uh, visiting companies uh, that gives you that uh, uh, practical part as well, or at least you see what is uh, happening within the yeah. uh, organization. So I think that's uh, something good to, to do. Yeah. Do you have specific days or campaigns running? Uh, like so mm -hmm. that. that uh, if, if we don't link uh, the students directly or classes directly, that they can attend themselves. Like, is yeah. there a specific day open to everyone outside without arrangements, mm -hmm. previous arrangements? Well, I do not know the, the specific right. day as yeah. such, uh, but uh, well, from memory, it's always a, at a similar time. I think. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a pattern. So, okay. uh, but yeah, we would need to to check it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a specific uh, HR department who's taking care of mm -hmm. uh, such events yeah. or marketing department. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. For, for the, the, the plans tour, for example, they, they have to be uh, well planned in advance yeah. because uh, for safety reasons it's a sure, short yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, and um, um, as far as that's concerned, and uh, I'm thinking about the Netherlands, which is the country close by where we have got big uh, plans. Um, big site with the plants where we need products. I know that there are uh, open days that are organized on a regular basis uh, to schools, um, also to families, uh, because uh, as that happens usually on, on Saturday, so that uh, the employees themselves can bring their own um, their, their kids uh, their, in order to show uh, how the, the, the mother or the, the father, which kind of job yeah. they, uh, they do. Uh, and also to, to, to show uh, the, the the plant itself, so that there are uh, things that can be organized that are organized on a regular basis, mm -hmm. but they have to be planned well in advance mm -hmm. because uh, yeah, as you said, safety reasons safety, are very safety, important. Yeah. Safety, exactly, is very important. Absolutely. So uh, we have we haven't received yet questions from Malta, but I have some questions that were addressed. Through the registration form that we run, uh, that we we had uh, to for schools, and uh, there are some schools that I think would appreciate this to hear the answers for this as well. So uh, the topic of STEM in our daily life, how your companies maybe develop. You already mentioned some question, uh, some uh, some specific examples like chairs from plastic or other phones, but maybe there are like variety of things that. We are using, and it it was developed by petrochemical industry, and we don't know about it. <laughs> well, basically everything, uh, everything that you see around. Um, I mean, think about your bed. Okay, the bed is made by foam, uh, or foam. So, yeah. and uh, that is made by the chemical process, and uh, it can be. Uh, the consistency of the foam can give you a better sleep or a worse sleep. <laughs> and uh, think about uh, cars. I mean, um, cars. I mean, think about what is in a car like uh, the, the, the bumpers, uh, for example. Um, even some uh, um, parts. Uh, think about the parts that goes into the engine, the lubricating oils. So, Dow, for example, makes products that uh, um, help to make. Lubricating oils that are used in the manufacturing of lubricating oils. Um, think about um, uh, also products that are used in um, uh, every day. For example, when you have got a problem of, uh, with your tummy, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, so um, there are some ingredients there that are used. I can't say of course the, the brands, but that are used in uh, in, uh, in order to help you to uh, to alleviate your tummy. <laughs> Like if you call, in case of constipation, for example, um, think about um, uh, just to, to, to uh, constructions, constructions. Think about uh, buildings. Um, think about uh, um, buildings which have uh, uh, a lot of windows and that they have to be put one together with the other. You need silicon for it. Uh, so Dow, for example, makes uh, silicon. Um, then think about uh, uh, personal care products that are used for, for skin, like the hydrating cream, 
uh, or the hairspray or shampoo or products to handle this kind of hair, for example. So I have a lucky uh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> So there, there are products that are used to make um, shampoos to give special properties, specific properties to mm -hmm. the cream. Um, also think about the powder that is used for your washing machine. Um, so there are ingredients that Dow makes that go uh, that are, are used for the manufacturing of, of the uh, of the washing powder. Um, think about the dishwasher products that are made. In order to make the dishwasher, there are some panels, uh, there is also some foams, part that needs insulation mm -hmm. from electrical insulation, also sound insulation. Those are all products that are, are made in a, in, a, in a chemical company. So, yeah. so if you think about it, everything that is around you uh, is, is, made, uh, is made by a chemical company. And um, uh, think about, of course, I mean, we talked about uh, plastics. Uh, we talked about foams, um, there are also, I mean, electronics, uh, the, the parts that go into your cell phone uh, or other electronic appliances, uh, these are also made by, by chemicals. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, so uh, chemistry surrounds us, I would say. Yeah, yeah. And it's good to know because uh, then you see a real application of uh, chemical industry in, into our lives. It's in, integrated. It's integrated in our, in our life and sometimes we don't even realize it. Um, Any examples from, from your side? Yeah, I mean, in general about STEM, I mean, STEM yeah. uh, is, uh, is kind of everywhere. When I look at, into my, my travel, I've arrived yesterday from uh, Düsseldorf into Brussels. Mm -hmm. I, I got here by car. Obviously, a car needs to be engineered by, by somebody. Uh, so you need to have smart engineers for that. Uh, when I arrived, I had to find a, a parking slot. Uh, and uh, some while ago, I had the experience that nowadays, with the cars, you can press one button and the car parks you automatically. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, then I stepped outside my car and I had to pay for the parking. I had no coins with me, so. Uh, then I saw on the uh, on the uh, machine that I can also download an app to pay for that. Uh, so it's it's kind of it, uh, your your face with with STEM actually in, in every moment. Uh, and I think that's uh, actually very exciting, especially nowadays. I mean we. Uh, there's a, a there will be shortly a complete change in the way we live. Uh, there's a lot of uh, programs about automation and, and stuff. And I think it's just a very exciting uh, time. Uh, and for uh, for youngsters, I think there's a lot of uh, opportunities. Yeah. yeah. So STEM indeed everywhere, and uh, we have a couple of questions that we already answered uh, and Maltese class can see it afterwards uh, in the recording because the, the questions are repeated. I understand that schools are connected at different time and they also would like to hear this uh, live, but uh, we will not repeat the answers to the questions that we already received previously uh, and you will see it in the recording uh, after the session is done. We will share the link with you uh, in the follow-up email. And now coming to the uh, to the exact words of the topic, uh, so it's um, let me find it. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, all about talent and uh, important uh, aspect to see talented. Uh, people entering industry, but how would you define talent in general? Mm, I mean, for me personally, one comment about talent is, uh, for me, talent is somebody, if somebody is talented, he's by nature already maybe a bit better than others in, in things. But uh, I would also emphasize that uh, you don't need to be uh, the most talented person for something. There's always a, a span. Uh, I think there's everything uh, you would like to do, there's also room for, for learning. So I would, uh, would also encourage that if you think you maybe don't have a talent for, I don't know, whatever things uh, you, you would like to do, still you can learn these things. Uh, and I think that's uh, something important to, to keep in mind that uh, don't, uh, well, um, 
let somebody else or uh, what people tell you, you're, you're only good at that and then, yeah. uh, well, make, make up your own mind. Uh, uh, I think it's about uh, what it is you would like to do uh, and uh, uh, you can, everything you would like to do, you can also learn. I think there's, uh, don't let somebody give you any kind of boundaries in, in, in your life. Yeah, exactly. Go beyond your limits. In the sense that sometimes we are the worst enemy. Uh, we, it, the worst enemy is ourselves. Because we put uh, some limits to ourselves saying, Oh, I can't do this. And who says so? We, we say it. Or, or maybe some other people say it. But don't, don't believe it if somebody tells you, You can't do this. You can. As long as it's legal, of course. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so um, so I, I completely agree with, the, with, with you in the sense we. Uh, be sure about what you want to do and, uh, and, and, and also go out of the comfort zone because sometimes it's like uh, having the blanket of lines, you know, like, uh, you know, I'm comfortable here, I don't want to do that because maybe I don't want to feel well. Actually, take the, the courage to go out of the comfort zone and, and try, uh, try new things and uh, develop yourself, learn, read, don't... Uh, don't be, um, so one of the things that, especially in research uh, or market research, is triangulate. So, what does that mean? It means that don't be uh, happy just with one source of information. Don't be happy just with what you find on the internet. Okay? Go and look for other sources. Make sure that what you read is actually substantiated, is actually supported by other sources as well. Sources as well. So, um, and, uh, uh, and, and continuously learning will, will get you where, where, where you want, even though you are not maybe particularly talented at, uh, in, in mathematics, for example, but this doesn't have to be an obstacle for you to develop in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in studies and then in, in a job that involves mathematics. So um, just just be brave and uh, really don't, don't, don't look at the... There are no limits. You can do whatever you want. Uh, and I mean, also a role model can uh, can be uh, your inspiration. Think about uh, sports uh, athletes. Uh, one of my role models is uh, um, Alex Zanardi. Uh, he probably is an Italian, but he's a Paralympic uh, um, um, athlete. He, he doesn't have his legs. But uh, he was uh, he lost him. He was a pilot of uh, Formula One, mm -hmm. and he had an accident. Unfortunately, he lost his legs. But this does not uh, uh, stop him for from exploring and proving himself in other sports. Uh, mm -hmm. And he's now is a, a Olymp Paralympic uh, uh, cyclist. So he has won gold medal in the, the last um, uh, the last uh, uh, Olympic Games, Paralympic Games. So. A role model can inspire you, and a role model can be, can be a person in your family, uh, can be your teacher as well. Uh, and uh, have somebody that can sponsor you, that believes in you, but first of all, believe, believe in yourself and what you can do and you can achieve. Thank you very much for these inspiring advices. I think teachers will be happy that uh, they hear this from the experts, not reading just in the internet, because role models are everywhere. They're it can be a parent, maybe, or a teacher who can inspire. It's not necessary to to be a very famous person to to lead or yeah. The, the role models are around us uh, everywhere. So uh, we uh, have some time for the last question before we wrapping up the session. Um, I don't see anything new, any new questions in the chat, so uh, we can wait a bit. If, no, no one, no one is typing. So uh, then, a question from me to you, from you <laughs> and personally from me. So, what is the most satisfying part of your job, and what is the most challenging part of your job? How would you explain that this you like and this? Maybe it's challenging, and maybe you like it also, but uh, this is a challenge that you have to overcome in your mm. uh, I mean, what I like a lot is I mean, to work with, with people and also see uh, the... I mean, if you are um, 
targeted to to achieve something uh, to solve a, an issue yeah. and then over time you see a development that you go there to to solve it i think that is a very satisfying uh, um, uh, for me because then you at least see progress and that the things you do have some sort of value yeah <laughs> i think that's yeah, yeah. also important to to recognize that that the daily things you do that's actually there for for some things because everybody wants to have some sort of uh, uh, well value uh, or add value uh, uh, etc but uh, a challenging part or I mean I cannot really say dislike but of course then uh, if you are challenged with uh, with issues etc uh, I mean it could also be that uh, uh, somebody is not Agreeing with you yeah. things differently, <laughs> so uh, I think that's that's a challenge generally. But on the other side, that gives you also the opportunity to to achieve that you come to an uh, to find compromise, yeah? yeah, to find common ground. Uh, so I think uh, these are the things which came to, to my mind. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really interesting to me, and also in my work, I always face these the same challenges yeah. that you explained here. Yeah. So the, the most satisfying part of my job is, uh, is also working with people, working with teams. It's something that I really like a lot. I won't uh, be successful if there are no other people. Uh, so uh, the success of a team, uh, of an individual, is always because, as I said, it's a success of the team. So um, also I, the part that I, I also enjoy a lot is when a project is, uh, is completed and it has been successful and it has brought value to the company. Uh, and the value to the people that, that work in, in the project and, and brings as well recognition for the work that, uh, that they did. Um, now, the, uh, coming back indeed to the question of value, which is very important because I mean, you, you can't do things just for the sake of doing them. It has to bring some, some value, which can be uh, monetary or, or can be any other kind of uh, also soft uh, value uh, as well. Now, um, the parts which are more challenging, again, it's about people. It, it's when uh, working in teams, uh, then I uh, encounter maybe some resistance from people that are not completely on board because maybe they are not convinced. And then my challenge, or, or then I need to do then a better job as a leader in order to get people on board and uh, maybe to be more clear about the expectations. Probably if uh, they find it difficult to come on board or to be really involved in the project is because maybe the expectations were not uh, explained well uh, and um, uh, which uh, brings to the topic of being very clear about you want the other people from, from a specific for a specific task for a specific project so communication as Christophe has mentioned many times is, uh, is, is really crucial so yes challenging is, is indeed when uh, a person does not make advance a project because either he or she is not convinced or whether doesn't spend any time on the project, is not motivated enough and because then it means that it's a stopper for the, also for the rest of the team and, uh, and that it is a challenge that usually we overcome by talking to the, to the person yeah. and trying to understand the reasons behind it and sometimes it can be just a personal issue you know? We are people, eh? so we have different yeah. characters, so different way of looking at things. Also, that you explained that you have offices all over the world. Exactly, and yeah. Cultural exactly. aspect yes. is also playing some some crucial to some extent. Of Absolutely, course. which which is also the beauty of it at the same time. So it can be uh, can be a challenge, but the beauty is also the fact that a person from a different culture, different background, can bring things to the table that you didn't even think of. Uh, and which can you know, enrich the, the, the project, can, uh, can actually maybe even advance mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the project itself. Um, and uh, so, yes, the diversity is, uh, is, uh, is indeed uh, uh, crucial, but again, the inclusion as well, the fact that you need to make sure that the other person feels included. Uh, it's like in a classroom, I think, uh, okay. in a classroom I remember I was very shy until I was uh, 14 and then after 14 I don't know what happened. Uh, it, suddenly I started asking a lot of questions in the class, the teachers could not even uh, recognize me why. So I think it's because also it's the job of the teacher to ensure that, and the, the, other, the other students, to make sure that the, the opinions 
of everybody are are values. They, they yeah. bring value, mm -hmm. and this al allows them these the students to be better individuals later on because they respect the opinion of the other people, and uh, and they uh, and they can uh, ensure that also their opinion is respected. So it starts yeah, from childhood. I think. So, any last comments before I conclude? Yeah. <laughs> I just say uh, the floor is yours. I mean, we have a couple of minutes. Yeah. Uh, yes, I mean, maybe, maybe for, for me, it's uh, it's. I mean, I see in the in the news also that there's also with the classes a lot of things now done, thinking about uh, involving computer systems, etc. Mm -hmm. Which is, I mean, nice in a way, but I would, I mean, personally, I think that make sure that. You also focus on commun communicating to mm -hmm. each other because mm -hmm. I think in the future what we say see with all the automation is that that uh, computers get smarter and smarter that they can communicate uh, to each other things will get automated uh, but I think what computer systems will not be able to do is to have empathy uh, to know how uh, to treat people uh, communicate and I think that's something. Uh, where uh, schools should also uh, focus on instead of uh, just using computers, typing something into computer, uh, that part will be automated most likely in, in the future. So I think that's uh, probably um, at least my opinion. Yeah. Sure, sure. It's uh, all about uh, your personal perspective mm -hmm. because we cannot speak of uh, like general general perspective without. Personalizing it, it's uh, yeah. always our attitude. That, uh, so, uh, and I see, I mean, I see a risk in a way in, in smartphones. I mean, I walked here uh, to, to yeah. the office, and uh, I mean, you see a lot of people also then walking with their mobile phones like like this. So it's it's. I think of course mobile phones like I've explained already with with all those nice apps you have uh, give some value to your life, but also can limit yourself. Yeah, I think it's yeah. it's. Uh, uh, he is just uh, uh, well stay open and uh, really communicate uh, face to face instead of uh, only using uh, a smartphone as, as such. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Maybe pick up the phone and talk if you can't see the person as well. Yeah, I was also impressed, uh, you know, when in the train this morning coming here, yeah. everybody was on the phone. And there were times when in the train you would start chatting with the, with the person yeah. who was uh, traveling with you. This doesn't happen anymore because everybody is so much. Uh, yeah, on their on, on the mobile phone and they're not really looking up and see who is just who's in front of me. Um, so yes, so I would say on, on this like keep communicating with people uh, and, um, and, and and yeah, and go beyond the the, the, the surface. I mean, uh, triangulate the knowledge as well. <laughs> like go into the depth. Don't don't stay on on, on the surface because the surface. Does not bring anywhere. I mean, does not bring any value. Uh, and going to the depth of the relationship as well with the, with, with people. Ensure, uh, make sure that what you are communicating is it actually well understood by the other person. Because we probably think, yes, I was clear, but maybe I was not. Uh, and uh, because uh, I mean, we, I made this this mistake assuming that somebody has, mm -hmm. has understood what I was saying, but actually either work or in a, in a personal uh, relationship. But so make sure that the person in front of you, the person you, you are working, the person you are studying with, uh, knows exactly what uh, um, that, that the message is clear. So uh, validate each time this with, uh, and this is also for the teachers as well. Sure. It's for the teachers, for for the students. If you have got a project, a study, a study that you have to do together. Make sure that everybody knows what you are going to achieve, which is the objective, what is going to be the result uh, that you are going to have, and that everything yes, planned is essential. Thank you very much. So, uh, unfortunately, the time of the chat is almost up, mm -hmm. so I have to, to wrap up the Thank session. You. Thank you, Rosa. Thank you, Christophe, for coming here, for being here with your uh, valuable comments, because there is really things that we need to rethink uh, and maybe a couple of times to, to listen to the recording afterwards. Uh, it, I see from the comments that it was useful for teachers and fruitful session. They are thanking you uh, through the chat and uh, they learned a lot. Um, 
And I would like to thank the audience for participating. I hope to see you again in the next, uh, in the future, STEM Alliance and Scientix activities. And actually, we have a great, um, great, great uh, news. Uh, we are announcing the competition that is dedicated to STEM Discovery Week. Uh, STEM Discovery Week is all about uh, STEM activities all around Europe that are organized by schools, by teachers, by students, by any other stakeholders who would like to promote STEM in Europe. And we are uh, the, the week itself. It will take place between 22nd and 28th of April this year. And but we would like to make April the whole month of STEM. Uh, so uh, everyone, uh, all teachers are invited to. Uh, to submit their activities and resources based on STEM uh, in STEM Alliance uh, competition that will be launched very soon. Keep uh, keep uh, checking the, the link that I'm sharing with you because uh, we are uh, really will announce this uh, this very uh, soon. And the recording of the chat, as I already mentioned, will be available on the STEM Alliance website. You will receive the emails with a direct link and with a short follow-up uh, evaluation form. We would like to know more how we can improve our sessions in future. So uh, I'm closing the session now and thank you very much again for, for being here. I think it was really good discussion and we learned a lot today. <laughs> we learned yeah. a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for listening. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.